Hello, good evening to all. It's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Monday's trading, the 14th of March 2016. This video is being brought to you by uh, www.cfds.com, your specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage. Certainly um, uh, qualify and be eligible for that uh, very healthy uh, starting bonus offer of 25%. And uh, alternatively, you can visit the educational site, which is www.cfds.education, to certainly learn more, where I post my uh, video and analysis, etc., and charts throughout the day. Okay, now let's uh, bring up a review uh, post the um, ECB uh, bazooka that backfired to a large extent, given the fact that Draghi signaled an end to uh, potential rate cuts, and uh, how do we interpret the markets uh, from, obviously, here on in. Okay, interesting scenario, to say the least. Let's start off with regards to the uh, week of uh, data from all, all over in the Asian market. So over the weekend, we've had uh, economic data out of China, certainly weak. Anti-QE statements as well from uh, China, certainly stating that the, no additional stimulus is required. Uh, if I just bring up this article for you, which is quite important. Uh, Zhu says no big PBOC, PBOC stimulus needed, as data suggests otherwise. Okay, so that again, anti-QE rhetoric plus weaker data out of China over the weekend. Not exactly good news, is it, folks? Okay, so that certainly will uh, trigger off a risk aversion trade from my perspective, which obviously should help the euro. So watch out for the euro. Whenever you have risk off now, the euro will appreciate because it's become a, uh, a fair trade to a large extent. Okay, a safe haven trade from my perspective, given the anti-QE nature. Okay, so weaker data out of China, uh, coupled along with bearish comments, i.e. hawkish comments with regards to no additional stimulus. Uh, that should technically help the yuan um, trade higher. But as we all know, uh, the yuan has become a fair trade as, in and of itself as well. Uh, allow me to explain. Okay, so you have the Chinese renminbi now into gap fill resistance to the daily chart. And you can see the weekly chart, the renminbi is into resistance. So whenever there's a risk aversion trade, money flows into the euro, into the dollar to a large extent, CHF. OK, and money flows out of the renminbi because of lack of faith in China, etc, etc. OK, given the fact that the renminbi is now into resistance, what will most likely more than likely happen from my perspective is there'll be capital flight uh, outflows out of China, etc. The yuan and the renminbi coming under pressure. OK, uh, we talk of potential, uh, obviously, um, devaluing, etc, etc. Basically, the, the renminbi is going to fall from here, which is going to trigger off the sell off in the uh, the Chinese markets, okay, and that will obviously trigger the uh, yen and the uh, the euro to move higher, which it already has to a large extent, okay, and uh, you will see the USD JPY potentially slide further, okay, the yen start to rally, okay, so if I bring up the chart, the yen uh, as well, which is uh, in an interesting position, uh, the yen is into double bottom support on the 60 minute chart, uh, the daily chart on the yen is now into gap fill support, so the yen certainly is signaling from here that it wants to bounce. So if the yen bounces, that's going to cause the yuan to fall, okay? And the euro will potentially bounce as well, given the fact that uh, it certainly has reversed to a large extent. You can see here the euro from 1.137, it's already started to rally, given the fact that you have a risk aversion trade. And equities obviously now are expected to hold, uh, so obviously see weakness as well. So it certainly is in an interesting position, okay, to say the least. So. Let's see exactly how this week unfolds. Now, the Nikkei itself is into gap for resistance. It's holding that resistance zone and therefore looking to potentially uh, move lower here. Okay, so again, interesting, given the fact that the yen is into gap for support. If the yen starts to break down, then yet you'll see the total re uh, reverse, the euro moving lower, CHF moving lower, the yuan potentially moving higher, and uh, uh, the uh, Chinese markets leading the gains globally. Okay, so again, interesting, interesting scenario, okay? Now, the other factor as well here, folks, is the uh, buns. You please watch the buns, okay? The buns are very, very important here as to the potential uh, movement in the euro itself. Now, the buns have a H&S formation, a daily chart, given the fact that Draghi, you can see here the buns did rally initially, given the fact that we had additional QE, etc., etc. But as soon as Draghi mentioned uh, and talked about the, uh, the the probability, well, not the probability, the certainty of no more rate uh, cuts going forward, Obviously, that's caused the uh, the bonds to uh, potentially collapse, cause the yields to rally, and that's obviously triggered the euro rally. Uh, obviously, on uh, mass, the four-hour chart you can clearly see the HNS formation. We're basically consolidating below that neckline, and therefore looking to move lower. If we are going to move lower, then there is a gap fill below, which which is targeting the 200 MA, and that's going to cause the euro to certainly appreciate further, and which in turn obviously is going to call weaker equities.
okay now talking about equities let's move on to equities let's start off with the euro stocks let's see exactly where this is positioned now the daily chart is is certainly very concerning given the fact that you have a topping tail okay that's your classical topping tail we did have some follow through the next day so it certainly is questioning questioning that topping tail so again we allow it to question but given the fact that the euro has not declined it's still coming currently at that 1.1560 zone it's basically uh, um, a telling us if i just bring up a daily chart the euro you can see that we've put a potential topping the bottoming tail sorry here and we're looking to potentially thrust higher given the fact that there's no additional rate cuts now again that's not exactly a promising sign so you're looking at uh, a potential of 1.13 being to hit even the uh, fib 75 percent and you currently have a bull flag scenario situation as we speak okay also on the weekly chart as well if there's no additional rate cuts and you are seeing a potential bottom in the euro and you are looking for a potential thrust higher on the in the longer term okay so we will qe be sufficient enough to keep the uh, euro at bay i think not given the fact there's no additional rate cuts and that monetary policy divergence it's no longer the case that may help the uh, the us dollar side of the equation and that's certainly going to be interesting as well okay now also we've had talks with regard to saying is iran saying it might join talks to freeze oil production but not yet okay so again oil could come under further pressure with regards to that news and that obviously is going to trigger off more further risk aversion okay and therefore i expect the kiwi and aussie to be under pressure and uh, it should be interesting to see exactly what happens okay right okay so euro again is causing concerns would be due to the export machine in europe okay so take that into consideration so uh, with the euro being at 1.160 that alone is risk aversion okay that's immediate risk off and that's going to hurt exports going forward okay so again that's a, a, a negative for the european equity market okay and that certainly hasn't even though you are getting qe if you still have a stronger euro there's absolutely no point the whole concept is of qe really is to debauch and devalue the currency which in turn helps the uh, the actual uh, uh, revival of uh, exports and obviously industry and jobs etc etc okay so topping tail on the euro stocks again that's not exactly a bullish sign 60 minute chart you are looking at a uh, rever uh, 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 a reversal here quite an impressive one as such given the fact that we sold off quite substantially on the stronger euro we have uh, uh, retraced 50 to 61 to 75 percent i don't expect a further move and therefore looking for a h and s formation here to potentially move lower and looking to fill the gap below okay so keep an eye on the euro stocks and the potential gap below euros uh, 350 again topping tail holding resistance therefore weakness uh, stock 600 again on the daily chart you can see that you have this potential topping tail and we're holding that resistance looking to potentially move lower the german dax uh, you have the unfilled gap below which is at six five six nine five hundred so again markets remain vulnerable there 60 minute chart on the dax again you're into that fib 61 to 75 percent resistance and horizontal resistance as well daily chart on the german dax topping tail now we have had news with regards to merkel potentially losing two states to uh, anti-immigration party etc the news itself is certainly bearish for the uh, uh, the uh, german export machine okay chancellor merkel's conservative lost out in two of the uh, three regional state elections on sunday as germans have gave a thumbs down to accommodating refugee policy with a big vote for the anti-immigration alternative okay so again that certainly is negative news further negative news adding the fact that you got weaker euro weaker chinese data anti-qe talk from china it certainly is adding up to be a risk aversion trade okay now bringing up the french cac as well let's bring up the cac itself now you did have strong volume going into the close which is slightly impressive okay but well, we should see whether or not that can last given the uh, weak data that we've had from china okay so again fib 75 to 61 percent resistance same type of pattern obviously you've got the uh, topping tail there as well okay uh certainly will be interesting to see whether or not I mean, we've held this uh, gap fill so far if we do start to push high then you are looking at those gaps above uh, but again very unlikely given the fact that the euro is trading at 1.160 unless we have a substantial sell-off in the euro now the FTSE 100 is interesting okay obviously it's being held held up and helped uh, uh, to a large extent by the uh, the rise in oil given the fact that you had the Iranian news now over the weekend with them not joining well they are talking about joining but not joining yet until they reach this four million dollar uh, four million uh, uh, barrels I think uh, capacity uh, let's just confirm this uh, Iran exports are due to reach 2 million barrels per day in the in the Iranian month that ends on March, up from 1.75 million, but they want to reach a 4 million barrel per day uh, target. So I don't think they're going to be freezing production anytime soon, which obviously, as we all know, is negative oil. Now, talking about oil, let's bring up the chart of the oil. Uh, let's just quickly bring up crude oil for you. 
And let's see exactly where this is positioned. Where are you, crude oil? Here we go. Okay. So crude oil on the four-hour chart, higher highs, higher lows, but certainly looking like it's, it wants to exhaust or looking into exhaustion potentially because it's not putting in a higher high or substantial higher high. A 60-minute chart, you clearly see here, we have this failed H&S formation. Uh, after that, you've um, had consolidation here and certainly indicating weakness from my perspective. Day, day, uh, daily chart, again, you're holding previous support equals resistance. Even though the IHS target is 40.3, I think we've hit a pivot high of 39, and that should be sufficient enough now for the markets to roll over and move down. That's my interpretation of the uh, the market itself. 10-minute chart, you're already seeing weakness, and therefore expect further weakness, given the fact that we've not made a higher high. We've put in a double top, triple top, quadruple top. Call it what you want. You are looking at making new lows, from my perspective. Also, with regards to copper as well, same type of scenario. You've got this bear flag on the daily chart, so therefore look for new, uh, a new low. Well, bas basically no higher highs on the, on the chart of copper, which again is, is risk aversion for the uh, the equity market itself. Also, with regards to gold, let's just bring up the chart of gold, which is interesting. Uh, okay, daily chart of gold. Uh, again, it's certainly um, uh, languishing at the high, no real substantial move higher, and certainly indicating weakness. As you can see, the double top is clearly there with a the topping tail on the on the four hour chart, therefore signaling the commodities are into resistance and looking to potentially move lower. Okay, now going back to the FTSE 100, given the fact that I digressed onto commodities, you had an inside bar day on, on Friday, so therefore again you had a weaker day trout on Friday as well, so therefore indicating weakness uh, lower to, in terms of talking about weaker wage growth, etc. Again, we retraced FIB 61 to 75%. And you are looking to potentially move lower from here, given the fact that you are expecting a lower high. You certainly have paused here now on the 10 minute chart. You certainly are holding resistance at 6150. That will be your pivot to work off. As soon as we break below this uh, 6115 uh, zone, okay, you are looking at potential support at 6100. Once that were to go, uh, you are looking at potentially uh, 36040 being revisited very, very quickly below. So watch out for that zone below. On the daily chart, the next potential support on the FTSE is going to be that uh, 5850 zone, and that will be interesting to see whether or not the market tags that, okay, if we do fall low. But I personally think we are, and that's the next level that we are potentially going to visit. The 5850 to the 5900 zone on the FTSE 100 on the expectation of weaker commodities, and obviously you have Brexit concerns uh, certainly clouding the FTSE as well, so certainly take that into consideration, folks, okay? Right, that's the FTSE 100 for you, okay? Now, uh, given the uh, commodities and given the fact that we are looking at commodities here, let's just bring up the chart of commodities, look at a daily chart. You can see that we are potentially looking exhausted here, given the fact that you are into previous support equal resistance. You are broken out on the uh, the daily chart, though. This is the Wisdom Tree Continuous Commodity Index, GCC. So certainly keep an eye on this potential uh, index. The 4-hour, again, from my perspective, looks exhausted. 60-minute as well, you can certainly see weakness. And the 10-minute chart, you can certainly see weakness with potential gap fill below. So certainly indicating weakness from my perspective, given the bearish candle. Any other indices that we can share whilst we're here? Let's just bring up the uh, European oil and gas sector. As always, it's very important, given the uh, daily chart. Uh, and you can certainly see that it's an inside bar. We've held up resistance, and we are looking at consolidation. And you are looking at a potential bear flag here, given the fact that you've had bearish news on the Iranian front with regards to them reaching 4 million barrels uh, per day and they're currently at two or, or just about ramped up to two million uh, it's very unlikely for us to see weaker uh, so stronger oil prices from here given the supply obviously excess supply and the supply glut as well so you are looking at a potential bear flag scenario for a weaker uh, move in the uh, commodities sector or the oil and gas sector now the, for the banks itself again you've had the banks uh, inside day again okay given the uh, the fact that uh, you are seeing additional qe etc whether or not the, the, the banks certainly were helped given the fact that the the ECB has stopped in terms of uh, cutting any further rates, so therefore there's no additional disaster for the banks. But can they weather the storm of commodities? Okay, so if oil prices were to start falling, it certainly comes into question given the fact that Deutsche Bank was potentially, uh, or a lot of these banks are exposed to the commodity sector, can they withstand that storm? That's going to be very interesting, and they have had quite an impressive run as of late as well. So certainly some air needs to come out of the, uh, the banking sector as well. So keep an eye on that, okay? Keep an eye on that and see exactly how the market reacts there. Okay, so energy sector you can clearly see here. And with regards to the banking sector, the financials, European, you can see that topping tail certainly is in and you're back into that resistance zone on the financials. So certainly expecting weakness on the, uh, the actual uh, commodity front itself, okay? 
Uh, anything else that we need to look at? Uh, this is Deutsche Bank. I mean, this is the banking stock itself, and you can clearly see that topping tail gap fill resistance. So Deutsche Bank certainly is into potential resistance as well. Okay. Let's just bring up the chart of the S&P 500 because I think that will be interesting. Um, the reason why I say the S&P 500 because the daily chart of the S&P 500 is into 200 MA, uh, and uh, that alone is is actually resistance for the for, for the S&P 500. So, given the fact that the S&P is into 200 MA, therefore it's risk off. Therefore, you are looking at a potential reversal on the S&P, and there, in, which in turn equals a reversal in European equities. So. I think that's a summation of uh, the European analysis. I'm expecting weakness uh, to start off with, and then we'll see exactly how the markets adapt. Now, there's no real economic data out uh, tomorrow, other than the fact that you've got uh, China money supply overnight, you've got EU industrial production, and that's about it, okay, in terms of economic data. So, reliance will be on fundamentals, and fundamentals are certainly weak at this juncture. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.